All right, here are my top 10 picks for astrophysics books with a couple honorable mentions here and there. Coming in at number 10, we have Neil deGrasse Tyson, Death by Black Hole. This is a classic Tyson book. It is him at his most Tyson-y. You can feel the excitement and the passion he has for the subject coming off of every page. And you can honestly see why he gained such a following with just the way he explains stuff. It's not just about black holes. It covers a variety of subjects. If you've taken some physics, if you are pretty well versed in the subject, you'll notice there's some stuff that he's, I don't want to say liberties, but there's definitely some stuff there where it almost touches into pop science, but it's not anything egregious that I would, that would make me not recommend this book. I do really, really enjoy this. Coming in at number nine is Lewis Carroll Epstein's Relativity Visualized. This book is, I mean, it even says it on the cover, is the gold nugget of relativity books. If you've never taken a physics class, but you want to know more about the subject and learn about it in a very scientific way, this is the book for you. It has diagrams, it has little quizzes for yourself. And if you have taken some physics classes and you want to understand the subject in an intuitive, visual manner, this is just, I cannot recommend this book enough. The only reason it's not higher up on my list is because it can be a bit difficult to find. I believe it's out of print. I have not found a new copy anywhere and it can set you back some. I've seen a price between $30 to $80 or more in the past. You can get a copy online for free, but if you're like me, I have really bad vision and I can't read digital copy books. So I had to get the hard copy. I wish I would have had this actually when I was in college, but I'm just happy I found it now. And now for our first special mention, Einstein's Relativity, the special and general theory. Yes, you can buy the book. If you're going to get Relativity visualized and you can find a copy of this to go along with it, I love it. I can't officially put it on this list because it is a lot more technical than the other books. And you will get the most out of relativity if you have already taken some physics classes or you're pretty well versed in the subject. It's got some math, it's got some heavy terminology, but if you have that in, along with relativity visualized, you will view relativity and it'll open it up to you in a way that I don't think any science communicator can. For number eight, we have Kip Thorne's Black Holes and Time Warps. This is a hefty, hefty, thick with two C's book. Wow. I don't know why, but I was damaged somewhere in my childhood and I just cannot get into science fiction or really any fiction other than I was able to read Contact. But there is a section in this book where he talks about traveling near a black hole and it, it, he turns it into this story and it talks about t gravitational time dilation. It talks about time dilation going across galaxies and it's a wild ride while also getting into some serious, serious science. I love this book. It's a really, really thick, long book, but absolutely worth the read. It's a little bit older, so there's some out of date stuff. Still get it. Coming in at number seven is the first of many Carl Sagan books on this list, Cosmos. This is essentially the book version of the series. Beautiful. He has a way with words. He is poetic. He is Carl Sagan. He is Carl Sagan and he is precious. And I know that he has long since been deceased, but he is still a national treasure. So I have this habit and I may anger some book owners, but whenever I read a line or something in a book that stands out to me, I underline it with a pen and pretty much all of Cosmos and well, most of my Carl Sagan books are underlined and I own his entire collection. Number six, Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. I mean, can you really have a top 10 physics book and not have a brief history of time on it? It's an extraordinary read. He is a brilliant, brilliant mind. I think I read it in like a day, maybe two. It's an amazing, engaging and mind bending read for sure. Coming in at number five is Dava Sobel, The Glass Universe. This is about the female astronomers at Harvard University that worked with Pickering and how they measured the stars. Also being a female who at one point was planning on getting a PhD in astrophysics and doing research. This book is just very special to me, but if you want to know about the history of women in astronomy, this is a wonderful read. If you want to know just about the history of astronomy and some of these breakthroughs that came from Harvard University and these, and these women, I recommend this book great read. It's time for yet another special mention. This is more of a textbook. I don't even know if anyone can find this book anywhere, but if you can, it is by Stephen M. Fabian. 
and it's called Patterns in the Sky, an Introduction to Ethnoastronomy. So one of my earliest astronomy classes way back in the day was archaeoastronomy. I ended up being able to actually go on some archaeological digs and did some cool like sky surveys and, and worked with archaeologists to translate petroglyphs and find the astronomical phenomena that, that they're related to, and it was really cool. But I love this book because it tells you about ethnoastronomy, and it's not that often that you find books that talk about that. So if you want to learn about things like the solar year in a scientific way, but then also how other cultures approach those things, this book, if you can find it, is a pretty cool little one to read. It's not super big, it's not super dense, but it, I felt it deserved an honorable mention. So Patterns in the Sky by Stephen M. Fabian. Coming in at number four is... Carl Sagan's Pale Blue Dot. I own Carl Sagan's entire library, so you should be surprised that this top 10 list isn't just Carl Sagan, but this book is beautiful. It gave me goosebumps. I couldn't put it down. I sometimes would like stop reading it for a bit to take a couple days break so I wouldn't finish it so fast. And I mentioned earlier how I like to underline things that stick out to me, um, but this is... <laughs> Let me see if I can find some of the pages in here that are just almost all under, there you go. Like I just so much of this book I underlined. I think I even wrote at the end of this, like after I got to the last page, like, wow, one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. Yes, wow. One of the best books, beautiful. That sums it up. Number three, Katie Max, The End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking. I don't think there's enough humor in astrophysics books. It is scientific, but accessible, and it is funny. She has some wonderful little just sidelines or one-liners in the book that really hit my sense of humor. And I have at times read it, gone back and reread the page again because I just was so entertained by stuff she says. Very similar sense of humor to me, which I, I love. It's a fun read considering it's about how everything will end. It discusses the three main ways the universe could end, the evidence for each, and which one is the most widely accepted and kind of what the implications of that would be. If you want a book that kind of hits your funny bone at times while also being about the end of absolutely everything, I recommend this book. Number two, if you saw one of my recent videos on TikTok about quantum physics, you might guess that this book would be in this list, and that is Something Deeply Hidden by Sean Carroll. I'm going to shoot my shot again. If, if you ever come across any of my videos, Dr. Carroll, and you want to send me an autographed copy of this, I wouldn't say no. This book is about quantum physics, and it will... I don't want to say blow your mind in a cliche kind of way, but it very well could blow your mind. It changed my perspective on how I viewed the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics. And he does a great job of taking one of the most, if not the most complex, difficult to understand subjects there is in all of science and make it readable, make it enjoyable, make it accessible to a large audience. I've recommended this book to some people who didn't take physics classes, who are just kind of interested in astronomy and physics just in general, and they read it and they felt like they had a general idea of what was going on, which is a really hard thing to do when it comes to quantum physics. So yeah, Sean Carroll, Something Deeply Hidden, I would buy it. If you saw my recent video, I am concerned. You probably have already guessed what my number one is. That is Carl Sagan's The Demon Haunted World. I... This book is desperately needed in today's world. I have a kid and I am genuinely concerned for his future. The vast majority of the population is susceptible to propaganda and lies and the type of propaganda that can lead to distrust in science that will lead to the destruction of our natural world. This book is not telling you what to think. It is a guide of how to think and how to protect yourself against being, as he puts it, bamboozled. I feel if people took this book to heart, the world would be an infinitely better place. And that's it. I would love for people to buy every book and read every book on that list because I am that way. But if you pick one, definitely do The Demon Haunted World. You will get more out of that book than I can possibly describe. <sighs> All right, well, see you next time with some hard science.